Hello, and welcome to this week's Coffee Chat in the Van. I just want to talk today about coffee packaging, because I think coffee packaging is the key to picking a coffee that you will like. Now, I get asked this constantly. People ask me what the best coffee is, what the best coffee would be to buy. Uh, sometimes they're a little more specific. What's the best coffee that they can buy in a grocery store? It's all basically the same thing. It's all, how do I pick the best coffee to buy for me so that I enjoy it? And I think it comes down to coffee packaging. Now, I'm going to give you a bad example of coffee packaging, and that's this coffee here. Now, I don't want to pick on Dunkin' Donuts. I don't ever remember having Dunkin' Donuts coffee before, but I bought this mostly just as an example of what I don't like about coffee packaging. Now, this packaging is telling us, well, basically two things. It's telling us, buy this bag of coffee because this is from Dunkin' Donuts, and hey, you've had our coffee before and our donuts, and you liked it, remember? Well, I don't ever remember being in a Dunkin' Donuts and having their coffee, so uh, that bit of marketing doesn't work for me. Now, the other little bit of information, the only other bit of information this bag gives us, is that it is a medium roast coffee. That's it. That's the only other information that we have. So if I'm not going to buy this because I know that I like Dunkin' coffee, I might buy it because it's telling me it's medium roast. That's good. Information is good. I like that it's telling me something. But I would rather packaging give me a little bit more information. So all coffee has a little bit of nuanced flavors. They all taste just a little bit differently, depending on where they came from, how they were grown, and then how they were roasted. So most coffees will tell us the roast level on the outside. Uh, even a poorly packaged bag of coffee tells us the roast level on the outside. I want to know a description of what the coffee might taste like. So this coffee here, this has been one of my favorite, absolute favorite coffees for years uh, from a company called Groundwork, which is out of Los Angeles. They also have a roastery in Portland. Uh, if you're not in those two areas, you probably have not seen this coffee. Uh, this is a small brand that sells to a small area. So if we look at the packaging here, we're going to notice some descriptors. And honestly, I don't think I always agree with these descriptions. So this particular can of coffee has as a descriptor milk chocolate, red berry, and tangerine. Now my taste buds are not that well refined that I can taste this coffee and say, yes, I taste a little tangerine, and yes, I taste some kind of red berry. I don't get that. Uh, I do get the chocolate analogy. I think most all coffees taste a bit chocolatey. But I think what's interesting here is if we look at these descriptions and try to remember them each time we buy a coffee and try a coffee, we can start to see that there's patterns of flavor profiles that we like that kind of work for us. So with this one in particular, this is milk chocolate. So yeah, I like the chocolate aspect of flavor profile in coffee. Like I said, I, I taste chocolate type flavors in most coffees that I buy and try. But this one's specifically saying milk chocolate. And I think that's the key because that's saying that this coffee has some creaminess to it. It's going to have kind of a creamy taste to it, even though we're not adding anything to it. It's just, that's just its natural flavor. And the roaster here is saying that it tastes like red berry and tangerine. Now, red berry to me would be some sweetness, maybe fruity sweetness. Uh, so that's a, that's a good descriptor to remember. And the tangerine, I don't really get, uh, except maybe that they mean there's a little bit of sweetness and acidity there. 
and maybe this this coffee has a little bit of acidity not much it's a really smooth coffee but there's there is a little bit of acidity that makes this coffee really well rounded when you drink it so these are good descriptors and so when i go back to the store and i can't find my favorite coffee i can then look along the shelf for something that has those same descriptions or those same type descriptors that kind of clue me into that this this other coffee is going to taste similar so this is the bag i've been drinking now this is same company and their ethiopian blend and this bag has some similar descriptors to it fresh citrus i think to me means a little bit of acidity uh, dark fruit again sweetness and there's that one from before milk chocolate and i know i like a coffee that has a kind of creamy sweetness to it and so that's why i bought this coffee back when i first saw it on the shelf uh several months ago and i gave it a try because it not only did it come from a brand that i like and not only did i see that it was light roast and i was kind of as as the years go on i kind of gravitate more to a lighter roast so it, that appealed to me and then i saw those descriptors those descriptors were very much like my favorite blend that this company makes but that wasn't sold at that particular store and so i tried a new coffee and i ended up really liking it this may be my favorite coffee of all time uh and i probably wouldn't have picked it off the store shelf unless I had some indication that it was going to be a flavor profile that I liked. This coffee happens to be organic. That means it's a little bit more expensive. I tend to not buy organic coffees because they are usually a lot more expensive. And to my taste buds, uh, I don't notice a difference between organic and non-organic coffee. And so a lot of my buying decisions are based on uh, price. And so uh, these coffees are more expensive. I'm only going to buy them if I can get them at a good deal. I happened to buy this one the other day because it was on sale. Normally I pass this one up because regular price for it is about $15 for 12 ounces. I can't afford to pay $15 for 12 ounces all the time. But when I can find it on sale, it is a treat, let me tell you. So that's what I use to find new coffee and to kind of search out a coffee that I think I might like. Now, I've, I do this all the time. I, I scan the store shelves. If I can't find a coffee that I've had before and that I know that I'm going to like, I'll take a chance on something, especially if it's on sale, like this one here. This is a local roaster. This is a local roaster to San Diego, where I am at at the moment. And I know that this is probably going to be a coffee that I like. I haven't cracked into this yet. But when I look at the description of this coffee, I really like what they put on the bag. I mean, yeah, it's got great packaging. It looks, it looks fantastic. The packaging looks fantastic. But what's great about it is not just the name and the pretty packaging, but it really gives us very specific information about where uh, the flavor's gonna be, uh, what the roast is gonna be. I like that it gives us a little diagram of the roast level. This is right dead center at medium. And so it kind of gives us a little better idea of where it's going to be roasted instead of just this vague idea of it's light roast, it's medium roast, it's dark roast. I think we get hung up too much on roast level and we need to focus more on flavor profile, less on roast, more on flavor profile. And when we look at the flavor profile written on this bag of coffee, this really speaks to me. So first descriptor is brown sugar hey i like sweetness so this sounds good already dried apricots 
I don't really know what that means again. Some of these terms that they use are a little bit uh, crazy as far as I'm concerned. But it's a description that maybe means something more to you. Um, the third one, butterscotch. Of course, there's another descriptor that tells me this is a coffee I'm going to like. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be creamy and sweet. And so this is probably going to be a coffee that I really enjoy once I get into trying it. Anyway, that's what I look for when I look for coffee on the shelf. I'm looking for price first. If I can buy something on sale, that's what I'm going to grab. But I'm not going to just try anything. I'm not going to buy a bag of coffee that doesn't tell me anything. I'm really going to go for a bag that gives me lots and lots of information, gives me some informed buying power. And that's what I think is missing in most coffee packaging these days. I think we need to buy less of the generic stuff and grab more the stuff that gives us information. Hopefully companies will start putting that information on the bag for us so we have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to buy. That's my thought anyway. Hopefully you found this helpful. Maybe, maybe not, but uh, that's all I've got today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.